Boom, boom, boom. Dawn of the Final Day. Well, I don't know exactly when Never Kafka releases worldwide, so some of you guys actually might be getting Kafka before this video even goes live, so I'm sorry. But I want to make a video talking about Blade versus Kafka versus Giga Dan. I'm gonna talk about what each character relatively does. And if you should go for X, Y, or Z character, it all really depends on who you want. So I'm not going to tell you guys who's better, who's not. So I want to make this very clear at the beginning, because I see a lot of people bring up, like, this character's better, this character's better, this character's better, etc. So Star Rail, so far, has dropped a bunch of event limited 5 stars to every patches, and we're on 1.2 right now, getting ready to go to 1.3. So about 5 characters so far, and all of them are good! Every last one of them, Kafka's looking to be really good too, remains to be tested, but I'm gonna assume Kafka's good too, so we're gonna go with six, and Giga Dan looks amazing also, so we're gonna go seven. Every character in Star Rail is good. They haven't dropped a bad character yet, and I have no reason to believe any character is gonna be bad, so I'm not gonna tell you one character's better than the other. Instead, I'm gonna tell you what each character wants, what each character excels at, and stuff like that, so you can decide for yourself. I know it's a foreign concept a lot of people seem to have forgotten, but deciding for yourself is going to be a big factor in enjoyment for games like these, where it takes a lot of resources to actually level up a unit, so you wanna make sure it's a unit you really enjoy. So first off, the big bald, so Blade here. Blade actually has a pretty decent banner. It has Arlon, Sushang, and Natasha. I feel like Arlon's pretty slept on. Sushang's a, a phenomenal character. And then Natasha, everybody gets for free, so it's not really worthwhile. It's pretty much a dead slot. So you're really looking at Arlon and Natasha. I feel like Arlon is not insane, not to the level of Sushang, but Sushang is just absolutely amazing. So this banner right away, I think, is a pretty good banner. But Blade himself, a uh, good old bald. Bald is a very self-sufficient unit. I don't care what Tommy Tuto says about Blade needing Bronya to be good, whatever. He doesn't need anybody. Blade is very self-sufficient. He's going to do his own thing. He's going to keep himself alive through uh, his own HP restoration abilities. And he's going to be very skill point efficient at only using one every three turns. Now, I consider Clara in terms of SP efficiency a little bit better than him because Clara is generating a skill point every turn. He doesn't generate the skill point. He just consumes one every three turns. So you're really not going like positive in skill point efficiency, but he's not consuming a skill point every turn. So that makes him pretty skill point efficient. So he allows for you to run him more into the sub DPS category and kind of slot him in any team, especially if you don't have Clara, who Clara is really good at skill point efficiency. He's going to really take that slot. He's going to be good for just generating skill points for, or not generating skill points, but maintaining skill points for the rest of your team because he doesn't generate, he just maintains. And he's going to do tons of AOE damage on top of it. Lots of AoE damage, he's going to keep himself nice and healthy as long as you don't auto with him without Locha. Like, without Locha, auto on him can be very dangerous. So don't press the auto button if you're running him without Locha. But without Locha, you can still keep him very well and alive, just not autoing and using his moves intelligently because he has so many ways to restore his own HP. So yeah, I think Blade is actually a very, very, very strong unit. Very damn strong. Uh, he does tons of damage to you. He hits very, very hard. Uh, I don't think Clara is better than him. I don't think anybody's better than anybody. That's not what I'm here for. I'm just talking about in terms of skill point efficiency, shit, stuff like that. You get it. You get what I'm getting for. So next, we have Kafka. And Kafka's banner is cracked for Kafka. So if you want Kafka, you are summoning on this banner, not only for Kafka, but for the four stars on it, outside of Serval. Serval's kind of not needed anymore like she was in the past because Kafka can self-apply her own lightning, her own shock status now. So Serval's not really needed. Sampo's very, very good to run with Kafka. Uh, Luca is going to be Kafka's main source of actually dealing damage, unless you're running crit Kafka, crit Kafka. I've done the math on it. It's going to do good damage on a skill, but the ultimate's not going to do anything. And it'll do good damage on the follow too. But most of the damage is going to be coming out through the skill itself. Uh, just the AoE and proccing the DOT already on the target. That'll deal pretty good damage on just the skill. So if you're running crit Kafka, you don't really need Luka as much as you do if you're running like just pure DOT popping Kafka. But the way Kafka works is she's going to be pretty much solely assigned to DOT teams. But she's not going to shine without another strong DOT character until the future whenever more DOT characters come out. 
because she her damage doesn't rely on her her damage relies on her ability to pop the dot that's currently applied to the target meaning the stronger the dot you have applied to the target the stronger your kafka is so characters with very strong break effects and very strong break dots such as luca such as sempo because wind shear and physical both have very strong break dots those characters are going to go really really well with kafka they also have applied dots not nearly as strong as the break dots no matter what you do but they do have strong applied dots as well Kafka has a very strong applied DOT. Kafka is going to be pretty much a must in every DOT team from here till the end of time. But she is a character you could definitely get on a rerun whenever she has more options available to her whenever she does get rerun. Uh, but if you really want her, everything you need for her is on her banner. Even her weapon banner is very, very good for her. You have Eyes of Prey or Sampo. Uh, effect hit rate's not really crazy anymore, like, because of the 1.1 effect resistance changes, uh, effect hit rate kind of went down to where you don't really need a lot of effect hit rate on characters anymore. Uh, you have Resolution Shines of the Pearls of Sweat, Luca's Light Cone, very strong Light Cone, it reduces defense, it's a very, very good Light Cone to have. And then you have the Birth of Self with Herta. Herta's Light Cone is very good for any Erudition character. It's one of the strongest 4-star Light Cones you can have it on an Erudition character. So all in all, this is a pretty good weapon banner to go with. And then lastly, we have the character who I can't show you, who is Gigadan, because Gigadan is supposedly coming out to Kafka. We don't know for sure. Uh, we do know it's going to be Gigadan Arfu Shwan, but we are assuming Gigadan. So uh, Gigadan, or Dan Hang, Imbabitter, Lune, whatever you want to call him, uh, he's just going to be an insanely powerful imaginary DPS. But he's going to be very skill point hungry, where he's consuming three skill points a turn, essentially. So you're going to have a very unique team around him that's very good at skill point efficiency, what I brought up earlier with Blade. And you're going to want to constantly feed him all these skill points so he can do as much damage as possible. If you have him with Bronya, I can only imagine how many skill points per turn he's going to be using. But you're going to want to try to generate as many skill points as possible with Imbibitor Lune. But if you can actually meet these skill point, strict skill point requirements and make a team that's skill point efficient enough to where they can actually, most of the team can function on basic attacks alone, then you're going to have one of the strongest damage dealers in the game. Because Imbibitor Lune is going to hit like a massive truck with very, very big multi hits. And he's going to shred toughness. Basically, like Jingyu Wan, if Jingyu Wan wasn't tied to Lightning Lord, because Lightning Lord is just straight up too slow. So if you were able to give Lightning Lord enough speed to actually make Lightning Lord pretty damn good, then that would be a Bibiter Lune. And Bibiter Lune is going to be something similar to that, just takes a ton of skill points to actually get rolling, which is something to consider. So all in all, to recap for you guys, you have Blade, who's a skill point efficient, HP build character who can keep themselves alive. You can kind of slot them in any team you want. They're pretty good in that regard. You have Kafka, who's going to be a must for pretty much every DOT team coming in the future. But outside of that, it's kind of iffy. It depends on how you want to build her. She can be good, but you'll always have better options because pure DPS is going to be better than a centralized character because Kafka, once again, wants to be surrounded by DOT characters. So that really restricts the team. And then you have Imbibitor Lune, who is going to be a very restricted character. And the fact that he takes so many skill points to actually function. But if you can actually meet the restrictions, uh, he's going to be a very, very, very strong character. So that's hopefully all the three characters. Hopefully I explained their strengths, their weaknesses for you guys all in one concise video. So you can now decide for yourself who you want on your account. Hopefully. Anyways, hopefully this video helped you guys. Let me know who you guys are getting in the comment section below or if you already got Blade. I wanted to wait until the last day so you guys could have time to really think about it. But anyways, I know that sounds like an oxymoron. Last day, have time to think about it. No, I wanted you guys, wanted to make sure that I knew everything that was happening and I definitely wanted to put this video out before the banner swap so you guys can decide for yourself. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.